Well, when it comes to posting your holiday videos online, you want them to stand out. Absolutely, and our next guest is a veteran writer, producer, and even Hollywood director. His book and video series is called, and I love it, How to Shoot Video That Doesn't <laughs> Suck. You need to know it, especially today when you're going to be shooting stuff. Please welcome back to the show, Steve Stockman. Hey Hi, there, Steve. Steve. Hey. hey, thanks for having me. So what's the biggest problem you see when it comes to the videos people share? I think the biggest problem is that people overshare. So often what's going to happen with your holiday videos is you're going to start the camera running at the start of your holiday celebration and you leave it running for 40 minutes and then you send it to people who you then expect to watch for 40 minutes. <laughs> and the fact is that it just doesn't really work that way. Um, when people want to watch video, what they want to watch is something that isn't about the food. You know, that aluminum foil is going to be the same <laughs> aluminum foil you use 10 years from now, right? right? What people want is to see the faces of the people that they're working with. So the first thing is video is about people. So we don't want to just run the camera forever and ever and ever. Instead, we want to show people and show their faces so that we can see them and remember them years from now. All right, now, so some would say, well, if I do that, I might miss those great moments, you know, uh, because I didn't let it roll. Is that the case when you're talking about shooting short videos that uh, you might miss out on that? You might. And, you know, if you're just going to keep your videos on your phone and you're never going to show them to anybody, you get to do whatever you want. <laughs> okay, good, but good point. <laughs> you expect someone to sit through them. You have to think about how people watch video. And so, in this case, you know, a wide shot of the kitchen that just kind of waves around is not nearly as good as a series of shots where you can see people's faces and you can see what they're doing. Now, this is video I shot at Thanksgiving and I get to look at everyone. Sure, I, yeah. I see a little piece of turkey, but mostly this is going to be about the people and what they're doing at the holiday get together. And, and Steve, you also say, don't be afraid to get close. So often we, we shoot video from a far distance and think, well, we can just fix it in editing. Yeah, there's two problems with staying way on the other side of the room. One is that you will never see people's faces. And, you know, like a shot like this, you're going to go, well, who was that back in the corner? Who, who was that? What football game were they watching? Right. And no one really cares, right? What we want is to see their faces because in 10 years, these faces are not going to be at all the same. So I recommend that you zoom with your feet. That is that you actually walk up close to people and take a good look at them as opposed to sitting way back and, you know, just kind of capturing a jumble of stuff that's going on in the room. And if you shoot short shots of people that you've framed well, kind of like a still photograph, and then you just dump those short shots out into a movie, it's going to be way more interesting than that random wave it around video that you're used to doing. Yeah, and I'm looking at this video. I'm looking at the wall. I'm not even paying attention to the people because I'm thinking, yeah. well, there's people are going to be there. I want to see what I'm going to miss on the wall, and I'm obviously missing out what the subjects are. So that makes complete sense. But you have two other great tips, and they involve uh, interviewing people and misbehavior. Explain that. Well, so you... You want to interview people for your video and people forget that you're allowed to do this. You know, everybody thinks, well, it's like snapshots, but this right. is video. So you can ask your five-year-old what they think of New Year's Eve. You can ask them um, what they got for Christmas. You can ask them anything and they're going to be fascinating because five-year-olds are weird people and they're going to be totally different five years from now. Yeah. Right? So. It's important to, to remember that you get to ask. And the misbehavior thing, it's like, don't ever stop shooting unless somebody's bleeding. Okay? <laughs> it's like, you have to do, okay. if you have to do first aid, that's great. But if the cat ran up the tree and knocked the whole thing over, you shoot that because what are you gonna remember later? A polite Christmas dinner where everybody cleaned their lips with their napkins or that time the cat nearly set the house on fire. I got you. Steve, what about those? And um, I say this because I think about myself when video cameras first came out. You know, you have that one person that just is going to be the camera hog, okay? Yeah. And it's always going to want to be, try to be in every scene. But, you know, you know, Granny, you want to get some of that. Is there a way as far as direction goes, maybe like the beginning of the night or maybe while you're shooting, some things that you can kind of lay out for everybody so that, you know, you have a really good memory? 
Uh, you know, I, I try not to interfere at my family functions. Maybe it's because I'm a director and people are <laughs> suspicious of me. Yeah. But um, if you shoot the short shots and you line up your shots like you're taking a still photo um, and you're only rolling for 10 or 15 seconds because that's all you really need of grandma putting a pie in the oven. Okay. People will loosen up after a little while. You know, they'll start to take it easy. You'll become part of the furniture and then you'll be able to document what you want, stay close to people and have some really great memories for later. It makes a lot of sense there. And it's those memories too. And you know, cause I can go back on, on stuff that I shot with my kids younger. It, it, they, they last forever. And I, I agree with you. You want to interview that five-year-old because he's going to have a different point of view and he's not going to talk like that anymore. And they're never going to be that age. We're always going to be old. We're never going to be young always. Right? Well, well, plus Steve, isn't it yeah. great to be able to bring that video out when they're about to go to prom and show their date? Exactly what yes, they were like when they were five years old. Especially, or you know that embarrassing wedding video that you're going to need 20 years from now. This is this is the time to capture that material for sure. Now, any advice when it comes to cleaning out your all your video clips and your photos? Um, I don't know because I, there are two kinds of people in the world, right? There's people who really like to edit video, and there's people who would rather die. And I'm in the <laughs> rather die category, so I'm a director, but. But I have editors edit, right? There you so, go. Um, like, I haven't edited my wedding video, and that was more <laughs> than 20 years ago. Very nice. So. All right, Steve, thank you so much for more information on Steve, his book, and his video course. Please check out his website, stevestockman.com, or you can go to amazon.com and search for the title, How to Shoot Video That Does Not Suck. Trust me, if you're a dad, if you're a mom, you have a phone, you definitely want this course. You want to go through it because if you make all the great shots, you don't have to worry about editing yes. afterwards. Good stuff.